Hey guys, Jim here with Creative Play and Podcast Network, and here we are again in August. It is now hashtag RPG a day again for its eighth year. God, it's it's been so long. Again, we're joining in with all the other tabletop gamers out there to get creative and use the prompts now for RPG a day 2021 to inspire you guys to all write, vlog, blog, draw cool pictures this year. They're asking for whatever you do, do. So we are going to go ahead and start out with the next day. All right, guys, here we go. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, welcome back to Hashtag RPG A Day 2021. It is August the 6th. Today's word is flavor and chase and explore and path. All of those kind of work together. Especially if you put them in different order. It's a path you explore and chase for flavor. Mm. Now, how would you apply flavor to uh, RPGs? Me personally. I mean, like, what's your favorite flavor of RPG? <laughs> so I I could take flavor in two different directions. One is flavor text. Mm. Because adding flavor text to scenes and scenarios is really nice. If you throw some little cheesy thing out there that helps, you know, pull your players into the, the environment, that's always a good thing. And by flavor text, you basically mean extra t- description. Mm-hmm. You really try to, to to pull them into the moment. You give them um, more sights, smells, taste, the air, you know, the stink, the, the pleasant flavors, the rosy air, you know. And, and just throwing in smell, touch, tact, you know, tactile sensation, you can you can totally get players more involved into it. So if you like crossing the stream as you're getting hit with the warm summer breeze and the soft scent of rose and field flowers, totally sounds different of as you cross the stream, you can feel the slimy undercoating of the rocks. Yeah. And the cold chill that just leaches into your boots. And you See, just know it's going to take two totally different things ever for them to dry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you just throw out the uh, even something as simple as the flavor of text of and the bugs go silent. Something is like dun, dun, as dun. the bugs go silent. We all know that scene in the movie when the crickets just go dead silent and then the killer appears. You know, it, it becomes one of those little things that the players will immediately inject what their anticipation is based on the flavor. Oh, yeah. Things are about to get serious. <laughs> you know, as is, you know, you can just throw a sight or a smell out there and it can even be used to like tease to what's coming up. You know, if there's a cat, you can totally tell them that you smell a rotting corpse up in a tree you know that's totally something random but it's flavor text you can throw out there because now they're looking up you know now they're realizing death is on the tree branches as well as the ground yeah and like if you're trying to describe like a desert you you want to, that the heat is oppressive and the sun is just beating down on you it's like you start I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, you're trekking across the desert, you know, roll for, you know, your constitution. Mm -hmm. But it's another matter to, you know, describe how that sun feels. Your armor feels like an oven, you know, that type of thing. It Mm -hmm. it completely just changes the uh, experience. Yeah. And, and, 
and adding flavor to the scene is something that's it's it's free because let's be honest your gms you, you have no budget and it, it will add a lot to your character and even adding flavor to your attack if you're a player instead of saying i'm going to swing my sword at it of i spit a curse out at it as i swing my blade into his face Granted, it's not really giving you any mechanical bonus, but it sounds cool as opposed to just, I'm going to swing my sword. Ah, but it would give you a bonus if you were playing Scion, if you can stunt that stuff up where you really give descriptions, that you know, true. and if you can involve the environment, um, uh, those types of things, then uh, it can. So mm -hmm. by providing extra flavor text, um, stunt it up, give it more style and spin, um, it can help you at least in that game. Plus, it's just fun in general if you get, oh my, like, one, like Mike from our High Sea Shenanigans game, when, uh, um, or from the Daggers of Freeport, when mm -hmm. he starts describing <laughs> what he's gonna do, sometimes it's like, Oh, I mean, he when he was intimidating the flower girl who was spying. Oh, and I'm like taking notes and I'm like, I wrote down he intimidated me. <laughs> I mean, it was like, oh, I mean, I got chills up my spine. He was that good, you know, I mean, nicest guy. And. But he was able to give that flavor text that just, it's like, oh, <laughs> wow. And, and it's true. And, and as player to player, having somebody add flavor, as long as you're not like a spotlight hog, a little bit of flavor goes a long way. I mean, it really does. Like when you describe a spell or an ability with a little bit of flair, give it just that squirt of extra flavor just to make it a little plus one, you know make it your own macchiato mm -hmm. it you know or you you describe what your spell looks like to the group because we all know from video games now we expect particle effects <laughs> you know or you're as an archer you take that moment to say that i lick the fletching on my arrow before i let it fly <laughs> you know just those little things you see in movies that are just a little bit of flair you know just a little extra that they do that emphasizes the importance of the action yeah and of course, of that course that's, oh. it's it's not that to say, I mean, that's all well and good, but um, also don't want those characters who may not be or feel comfortable mm -hmm. uh, doing that type of or they feel like they're put on the spot. Um, they should not be pressured into providing true. flavor Very text true. if they're not comfortable doing it. Very true. And then a lot of times, you know, the, that's if you look at it from like a fiction point of view, they're strong supporting characters. You know, it's, it's they're just well, not some people flamboyant. just like vanilla. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be the big flamboyant, you know, one always constantly doing stuff. I mean, look at Robin Hood. Not everybody was as flam flamboyant as Scarlet and, you know, and Robin Hood. You know, you have, you know, Friar Tuck, who's very, very strong in flavor. But that's just because you knew him as what he was, you know. Or Little John, you know, their flavor was they're the big, strong, silent type. Mm -hmm. You know, Drax the Destroyer. <laughs> Look at the flavor that character has. He <laughs> might have picked Intel as his dump stat, but he owned that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and flavor, of course, can also be taken on your setting as a setting of what is the flavor or theme of the setting. You know, is this dark fantasy? Is it high fantasy? You can still have, is this sci-fi? Is it hard sci-fi? Is it soft sci-fi? Is it a horror sci-fi? Because, you know, that little extra flavor you throw into your settings can make a big difference in how it's interpreted. True. I mean, is this city, like, really dirty and filthy and that it's that undercurrent of miasma of evil? Or is it just a standard, you know, town and they're you're just under siege or something? It's like mm -hmm. completely different, different flavors. Uh, flavors of, you know. Is it your chocolate, your vanilla, or your strawberry? <laughs> Caramel. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> see flavor is important you know it, it all comes down to of and even missions and adventures is they can have different flavors too and of course yeah one of the hard I mean, things is dialing in what your player's favorite flavor is. Well, and also it's kind of sometimes kind of nice that, hey, if you have a really intense game or situation going on, maybe, you know, or like if a couple, epi- you know, players can't, but you still want to play, maybe do like um, a little side adventure that is, you know, maybe a little lighter flavor. Mm-hmm. Uh, break things up, you know, don't mm-hmm. be afraid to try, try different flavors on your adventure party, you know, you know, look at uh, Hercules and Xena, how they used to constantly like, we're going to try something totally different, you know, so they'd go off of the campiness and get like hardcore serious in one or two episodes mm-hmm. before they go back to crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you can break it up. So it's just not all one level. Mm hmm. And, you know, just because, you know, you're a hardcore sci-fi doesn't mean you can't have a horror episode or, you know, doesn't mean you can't try mixing up the flavors, you know, just a little. Because we all know that you can go in there and you can totally turn a uh, space adventure into a horror adventure, you know. Heck, Star Trek has showed us the flavor of the week episodes, you know, of all of a sudden this political thing is an episode, you know. All of a sudden, the next episode is completely different feel and taste, you know, because that's just the different flavor they're pulling out. And I like uh, when a, a party is that, that each of the characters have a different flavor because then you get more variety. So it's like, yeah, you may have that taciturn, you know, grumpy character. Or you have the one that's really lighthearted, um, the silly character. Uh, and if you are doing little adventures and stuff that relate specifically to a character, like you take turns, like, okay, this it's this person's, you know, so you can highlight different characters and stuff. Then the flavor of that character will flavor the adventure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that's nice. And and when someone takes lead on, on the adventure, it totally can change things. I mean, I mean, just have Tilda, you know, uh, take over an adventure and look what happens. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I just like, uh, like if a certain, uh, uh, what Kiri shields her character, uh, um, mm-hmm. the the uh, scion of Odin, you know, <laughs> who's like, oh, like, girl, but as you are, you know, just <laughs> that's just how she sounds. Be too. a lot more, you know, you know, full on murder hobo, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then you get Trixie, who's like, you know. No, let's try this a different way. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not going to play that game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to play a different game. But, and, and don't be afraid of trying different flavors when finding your character's voice. I mean, that that is one of the ways of finding your character is is trying different things. Oh, yeah, um actually each of my characters um, has a, a voice typically, mm-hmm. um, so that, um, I can get into their kind of mindset. Like, of course, Tilda, which I, I haven't gotten to play Tilda in a long time, but yeah, she's like, so I'm like, hi, I'm Tilda, you know, mm-hmm. she's that, you know, and then I have, you know, Sister Solis. She's a lot of fun. I never get to play her anymore. My tiefling cleric. Know, you know. Her big story arc, too. I know. She has all this freaking character history. Total flavor. Oh, my God. And she's <laughs> never, you know. None of the characters knew about it, too. None of the other players or characters knew about her backstory. So it's like, ah, oh, it could have left open for such amazing stuff. We may have to use her again. Or, or totally, you know, fanfic. I'm just saying, you should start writing. <laughs> uh, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that flavor too well. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we've gotten the most flavor flavor we can get out of the flavor today. Yeah. The, 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 we've chewed on this enough that the flavor has gone. Well, we don't want to chew on it until it gets too small, so we should probably wrap up. But... Uh-huh. 
the word for tomorrow is small. Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous one. Yeah. Small things, good things come in small packages. Indeed they do. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. I hope you had something with some good flavor in it. And uh, please make sure you, you hashtag uh, RPG a day 2021. Share what you've got. Comment, like, share. You know, part of the big thing about the t RPG a day is the fact that we're sharing each other's stuff. We're finding new podcasts. We're finding new blogs, new vlogs, things like that. And uh, artists, because we have a few friends that are going to be doing some artwork for RPG a day too, which I'm, I'm totally waiting on. But that's going to be awesome. So like always, guys, thank you for listening and talk to you tomorrow. But uh, make sure you're the bigger person because tomorrow is small. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows such as D&D &D, Journey of the 5th Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.